Hey y'all, if you're new here, I'm back reviewing Married in Medicine Season 9, Episode 9. Um, and this is the breaking point. And I, I said it on my last video for Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm trying to record on my laptop, so let's just see how it goes. Um, I would appreciate if you guys would subscribe, like the video, and share if you enjoy it and you enjoy this type of content. I will be dropping videos regularly. Definitely help a baby YouTuber to grow, grow with me, and let's get right into it. So we start off the episode with uh, Heavenly going to Dr. Damon's second location. She's bringing him lunch. Shout out to Dr. Damon for having two locations. That's definitely a great thing. Heavenly was asking him how he felt at, about Dr. Simone's dinner the other night. And he said he didn't like it. Like he didn't like anything about it. But he apologized for getting so upset. And, you know, Heavenly apologized as well. She didn't mean to make him feel that way. Um, she said she doesn't need to address Contessa again because they're just not in a good space. So she's just not going to address her. Dr. Scott is uh, at him, him and Dr. Contessa's location. And they're wrapping up their day. And he asks her, you know, how her and Heavenly are doing. And Contessa said, you know what? I'm beyond past it. I'm past the disagreements we had. She just shows compassion for her in this moment because we know that Heavenly's mother is not doing so well right now. And so she's just really showing compassion to her mom. Contessa has experienced this as well as far as losing her mother. So, you know, she can show some compassion in this moment. <clears throat> Dr. Damon said he just realized that maybe Heavenly is acting this way because Heavenly's mother is not doing well right now. And so that might have explained why she was acting this way. And I'm surprised that he didn't realize that sooner, like in the moment. But, you know, when you're in the heat of the moment, you're just thinking about what's going on right then and there. Contessa tells Dr. Scott that she loves Heavenly. She'll continue to reach out to her. She's going to continue to support her. She said they're like sisters. Uh, <laughs> her husband was like, y'all fight a little more than sisters, but okay. So, you know, I think that maybe they'll get back on track. So we move on and we see Audra. I don't know if she's going to become a main cast member. She started off as friend to the show. But her, her and her husband are meeting with their wedding planner. She said they got married legally, like in a courthouse earlier in the year. But now that things are kind of calming down with 19, that they can go forward and have their dream wedding. And she wants to incorporate her Ghana heritage. She's African. She stated that before. Um, the main thing is that they're just way in over their budget. They're just dropping money, dropping money, dropping money. They met at Howard. They've been together ever since. And, you know, I'm glad to see that they are having their dream wedding. So we move on to Anelia. And she's complaining about being a mother yet again. I'm surprised she had two children because she doesn't seem to like being a mother much. <laughs> I know it can get stressful, but sheesh. And she's talking to her mom, and she said she's happy her mom is there, even though, you know, it's kind of been a mess everywhere. Mom hasn't really been cleaning. But she was saying, telling her mom she doesn't want a random babysitter who doesn't really love and care for her children. Uh, she prefers to have the grandparent. And she's like, I don't know if they're going to take care of my kids or if they know how to drive as she's, like, crashing into a car. <laughs> it's just funny. But um, she tells her mother that she, well, first of all, she's so busy with vlogging. We know vlogging just takes up all of her day that she cannot do anything else, including parenting her child. <laughs> but she's also opening, she said it's a hair showroom. It sounded like a beauty supply store to me. I mean, I know Dr. Heavenly already opened one. Maybe you want to jazz up the name. It's giving beauty supply. <laughs> That's what I was getting from it. And she's basically going to sell weave because she said when she dealt with postpartum, she lost hair. Now she uses extensions and micro links, etc. Um, her mother is complaining once they get to the location. She's complaining about this. She's complaining about that. She did the same thing last season when she was complaining about everything about her house. And the house turned out beautiful. So I don't know if it was a good idea. Don't mix mama with business or anything that doesn't concern her, honestly. <laughs> but I digress. So Dr. Jackie meets with uh, a podcast duo. Um, there, She's explaining... Uh, it looks like they're part of the LGBTQ community. And so she's saying that, you know, there's a 
rumor out there that there's a thought that women who are having, you know, they're in same sex relationships that they don't need to still see the OBGYN. But she's like, you know, some of these diseases that they don't have no names, they don't care what you identify with, what your interest is, nothing. Like you still need to get checked out and get your lady parts checked. Whatever she said, whatever you identify as, if you have a lady part, you need to come to the OBGYN. We know Dr. Jackie does not play when it comes to the lady parts. And so one of the women was saying she hasn't been to the OBGYN since 2014. I said, wow. I don't know if this was filmed in 2021 or beginning of the year, 2022, but that's a long time. So she was, you know, fearful when she heard that. So she went right back immediately. They didn't get no insurance information or nothing. Straight to the back so Dr. Jackie can check on her. And I was glad that she did so she can give her some peace of mind. You got to know what's going on with your health. Health is wealth. So Dr. Carrie, Anelia's husband, is setting up a men's pampering session and the food was looking good. And I keep thinking, man, like I just want to move down south just for the food. Like there's not enough food options where I live. Like it's just so limited that just off the food alone, just to have some different options and some diversity would make me want to up and go. The gentlemen showed up. They're well dressed. Uh, Dr. Martin, who's Audra's husband you he's a dentist friends of the show i think they're going to bring them on a lot more um they were laughing and talking about different things he thought he heard edibles and he mentioned something about mary jane earlier when they were meeting with the wedding planner so i'm like okay with something you want to share is that how dentists get down in their downtime i mean i don't care what you do outside of the office as long as my teeth is getting taken care of <laughs> so the husband's Dr. Carey, he wanted them to get Botox because that's what he does. He does plastic surgery, Botox, things of that nature. The men all refuse. They don't want to do it. They should have done this with the women. <laughs> so Dr. Scott arrived late because one of his kids had a recital or something of that nature. So he was he got there a little late. When he arrived, he saw Cecil's car. You know, he has a vintage classic car. So he was taking pictures and selfies in front of it, putting his hands on it. <laughs> Just having a good time outside with it. Then he walk in like, hey, I saw your car out there. I ain't touch it though. <laughs> like, oh, they play too much. So Dr. Eugene asked the gentleman if any of their wives got the old shot. Toya got it. And he was wondering if anybody else's wives got it. And so Toya was like, he don't have to do nothing now. I got the old shot. Like, he can just be lazy and not do anything. And he's like, you just acting like you are this, like, sexual monster. Like, you are this big freak. And you are not. <laughs> She's like, I am. He's like, no, you are not. I'm like, Eugene getting a little tired of, of her trying to play him in front of these cameras. He letting it be known. I think those two should take sex off the table when the cameras are rolling. Before they start embarrassing each other. So Dr. Karen said his mother-in-law was there, so nothing happened. It's dry as a Sahara Desert for him. Ain't nothing happened down there. And Dr. Jean said, what? Your mother-in-law got it? She gonna hurt your father-in-law. She gonna, she gonna hurt his hips. I'm like, <laughs> the men, when they relax and they are alone away from the wives, it's just a key key. Um, Dr. Nemo was saying that he tried something himself, a natural, I think it was like a green tea or something along them lines and, you know, worked for him, but it was starting to be too frequent. Dr. Heavenly's like, you know, stop. It's just too, too often. I need a break. <laughs> so, you know, they're into trying different things. They want to, they'll try something when it comes to that, but they will not try this Botox. So Dr. Eugene is saying he's thinking about making changes. He's exhausted with working in the ER. He's been seeming spread thin for quite a while. I mean, we say it's because of, you know, the panorama, but I think he was exhausted prior to that, if you ask me. So Dr. Martin said, you know, he needs some marital advice. He's getting married. Any tips you can give? They laughing and joking and giving some tips. Even though I noticed that he didn't have a ring on and he said he's getting married. So I'm wondering, like, are y'all letting people think y'all are engaged? And you didn't tell anyone yet that you're legally married already or because you're introduced as husband and wife. <laughs> or are you letting it be known that, hey, we're already married. And, you know, he's just saying this because they have a big wedding coming. I don't know. Uh, so Dr. Karen said Nelia is his pin cushion, his words. He said every time, you know, he has a new Botox, something he needs to try, she's like, okay, sure, like, go for it. 
I'm not surprised. I, I always wonder women who are married to surgeons, like, do they, are they getting work done? Or does a surgeon say, you know what? I do surgery all day. I see these women with their bodies done and I just want someone natural. So it always, you know, made me think like, oh, hmm, like I wonder what their interest is. So Toya goes to visit her spiritual advisor. She vents about her stress during 19. Eugene's visiting Dr. Damon and he's um, venting about his overwhelm with you know during 19 and up till now and thinking of his next steps after you leave the er because he said when he met dr damon they both were working in the er damon was getting tired of working in the er so now that he's at this point because he was so excited he loved it at first now he's starting to think about life after er post er and Toya was just, you know, the advisor wrote the advice that she needs to write her feelings down. She felt like he wasn't a listening ear and listening to her stress and everything about this. But I, I get that y'all need to support each other. I definitely understand it's different struggles. But he was in the trenches when this was going on. And she didn't seem, we don't know what happens, you know, outside of the cameras. She didn't seem to be, you know, showing an enough compassion to me for what he could have been going through it was a lot but uh you know Damon lets him know that there's other options out there there you can still find happiness once you leave the ER once you step foot and go out there you can find happiness so then we get to Anelia she's complaining um that her mom isn't clean and the house is a wreck like she can't even recognize it and she's so used to uh, Miss Gomez, her former nanny, just doing everything that, you know, she I guess she thought her mother was going to fill those shoes. You know your mother. So why do you think that? Her mom said, you need to teach your children how to clean. Well, I mean, if you got a point, you got a point, mama. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she can help out. And I understand that some, some, you know, they're so young, but you do need to teach your children how to clean. She don't even want to clean it. So she ain't about to teach nobody how to do nothing. You got to be patient with these children when you're teaching them to do this stuff. And so, you know, they show flashbacks of Miss Gomez doing everything. She was spread thin. Y'all was working her to the bone. That's why she said, I'm leaving it. I'm never coming back. Not even for a visit. I'm not calling. I'm not saying, hey, I don't want to see y'all no more because she was tired. <laughs> she was exhausted. She was ready to go. She wants to be a grandma too and leave the house a wreck and not have to worry about cleaning. And so Neely is frustrated because, of course, she has to vlog and she has a photo shoot. So <laughs> Neely's mom is coming in there. She's trying on clothes. She's getting on her last nerves, seemingly almost intentionally. Like, Neely is like, you know, we need to have a talk. Like, you're not respecting the rules. And mom was like, I'm not listening to no rules. Like, I'm the mother, you're the child. Like, I'm not listening to no rules, point blank, period. And Neely's like, look, you need to stop treating me like a kid. And his mom's like, look, I can go. Take it or leave it. This is who I am. This is what you're going to get. If you don't like it, I can go out the door. <laughs> she's like, you need to respect my house. Like, she's like, you need to respect me. I'm coming to help you. Like, I'm a grandma. I'm not your mama. I'm like, I'm not the mother. You're the mother. I'm the grandmother. My mother would have never even been staying in the first place. So <laughs> she already got a lot more than I would have got. Because my mother might come. She might take the kids for, you know, a day or two. But she ain't about to be no nanny. She's not doing it. <laughs> like, she wants to stay home in the comfort of her home and follow her own rules. And I understand it. And so do I. <laughs> so I would have never even had this arrangement. And then it was like, you know, we can just meet in the middle. She's, you know, getting frantic because she doesn't want her mom to leave. She wants her to respect her. Your mom's not going to respect you. She's not going to listen to your rules. She does not care. She made it clear. She said it. Accept it or not. So, you know, her mom's setting her ways. And I just think that this is not going to work. And I think her husband's going to be tired of it as well because you're not really laying down the law like you need to. The conversation went nowhere. And basically, she's going to keep doing what she wants. End of story. But let me know what you guys are thinking. Do you think this arrangement between Anelia and her parents is going to work out long term? Let me know how you're feeling down in the comments. Do you think Dr. Eugene is going to step away? I thought it was a pretty good episode. We're not seeing that much of Quad, so I'm wondering, you know, what's she up to? She, I don't know. She got to come, come up with something with the storyline. <laughs> but, you know, I love Quad, but her nephew ain't enough. To get her, you know, we might be moving, she might be moving to the side so Audra can step in. I don't know. Let's let's see what, what happens and how this goes. Be sure to, again, subscribe, share, like, comment, <laughs> all of the above. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.